Good morning. How's everybody? Well, welcome to A Million Cups. And uh, how many entrepreneurs in the room? That's great. That's why we're here. First time attendees? That's great, too. Yeah, welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, we're going to do something a little different today. Um, after our first uh, presentation, Deb and Chad and I are going to look around the room and we're going to find somebody that's been here for a while. And we're going to ask them to get up and give a six minute pitch on what they're doing right now, kind of extemporaneously. Wow. It is April 1st, so. <laughs> we're not going to. We're not going to do that. Although that would be kind of fun, I think. Just to, yeah. Yeah, I think that would work out well. Anyway, we've got two good presentations. Uh, the first uh, presenter has been here before. Uh, this is what we call a refill. And personally, I get a, sometimes a bigger charge out of the refill than I do the initial presentation because you get to see what's happened during the intervening period. So, uh, Anessa? Uh, it's all yours. All right. Thank you, Sterling. Good morning. How are you all? Good. Can everybody hear me? Yes. <laughs> um, well, I am really excited to be back at One Million Cups. Uh, the weather did not allow for me to do that a few weeks ago, so I'm really um, thankful that, <laughs> that, um, that we have sunshine and balmy 60-degree uh, weather this morning. So. Anyway, um, without further ado, I want to start with a video real quick. Um, just get this going. This card gets in great deals, but that's not why I use it. What we're doing is giving people a tool, an incentive, to find and connect the best network of local places in the Ozarks area. By using the card, you will get to know and be supporting some of the best locally owned and unique places in the city. So just hop on the website or download the free app to keep finding new participating businesses. Pick up a card for 10 bucks and put your money where your heart is. With local people who are invested in the community where we all live. Getting to know local owners will help you see how you can benefit every day. It's a great way to get good deals around the city you love. You will save money, but better yet, you are buying from the heart of the Ozarks. We think that is a very beautiful thing. Okay, so that really kind of, and, and I have to give kudos to um, Plank Productions and 417 Video for doing that. They did a, a phenomenal job. So. Um, Anyway, that, that really sums up what Love Local, Buy Local is kind of all about. Um, I know you all are passionate about local or you wouldn't be here. Um, so I'm really happy to be back. As I said, we've had lots of changes um, over the past year, um, like growth. Growth has, has really um, been something that's been happening and we've been very excited about. Uh, we've more than tripled our number of member businesses uh, since I was here last, which was a um, little less than a year ago, I believe. So, um, 80 members plus uh, and growing all the time. So we've had a lot of technological change, uh, which is good, considering we live in a very technological world. There's now um, apps available, a free app available. Um, it's Android and iPhone um, available, and it's it's as I said, it's completely free. So if you have a Love Local card, you should definitely download the app to keep current on who is. Um, a member business. And I'll get to the card. Some of you might not know anything about that, so, and I'll get to that. But um, the cards can be registered to show up in the app. Again, I'll explain. Um, you hop on the website to do so, and there's been a lot of website upgrades as well. So if you haven't been on our site in a while, please take a look. Um, we have gotten into fundraising. We sort of look at fundraising as a way to um, give back, really, to the community. Um, we partnered with fantastic organizations like American Cancer Society, um, Summit Preparatory School, and the Boys Choir of Springfield. So, 
you know, offering 70% profit to these uh, organizations is, is really unheard of. Most people offer 40 to 50%, so it's, that's what I mean in saying that it's kind of our little way of sort of giving back. So, so that's been fun. There are now group advertising opportunities. So basically how this works is people can, member businesses can chip in um, on what I call a, a large impact ad. So you will be seeing an ad in the, in the uh, newsletter very soon. It's going to be a full page. This is going to run for three weeks. Um, and whoever wants to participate in it can. It's certainly not something that's required of members, but it's a way to get additional really great exposure um, at a really low cost. So businesses obviously get their logo included, not just their name. So, so look for the ad to be coming out very soon. So how did this all start? Um, really, it just started with an idea that I had. I've always been passionate about supporting local. And um, I think it's, it's really what makes up the beauty of our community. And um, I came from a very corporate background, and I saw how I was turning into more and more every day um, just a number. And I was really living that. And, and I didn't like it, so, um, so I decided to, to change it. So I really, I wanted to give people tools, um, incentives, reasons to go out and buy local and to support these brick and mortar businesses. So, you know, a lot of people in, in talking with them, they say buying local is more expensive. It's hard, you know, it's really hard to, to, to do that and commit to doing that. So I wanted to give people a reason to go do it and to get around that excuse. So. And I think keeping the money here where it belongs just makes sense and it strengthens our community. Um, so why do this? Why favor your neighbor? Reducing environmental impact is one really great reason. Um, people that own and operate a local businesses make more purchases locally, which makes sense. Um, reduces traffic congestion, less purchases are made outside of town, um, so less loss of habitat, not something you would really think about, but true, less pollution. Uh, local businesses support nonprofits a lot. 250% more support from local business owners than from corporations. I think that's awesome. So um, another great reason to buy local. Create jobs, this is something else you probably wouldn't figure, but local businesses are the largest employer nationally. I mean, we think that big businesses and corporations are taking over the world. They're not, they're really not. So let's preserve what we have um, and let's keep, let's keep people employed locally. So, um, most importantly, maybe not most importantly, but very important, um, supporting local business does maintain the beautiful tapestry that's been woven here. I like that saying. The places where we eat, we, we choose to shop, we play, all comprise that, that local flavor. Um, and if we only supported big corporations, big box chain stores, that's what would be here. And local businesses would go out, and then if that's what every town had, they would all look the same. So let's not let that happen. Put your money where your heart is, and keep those little mom and pop shops rolling in. It's all about preserving creativity, beauty, um, quality. I think uh, local food is just made with uh, more love and better ingredients, less preservatives. Um, just keep, let's keep it um, unique, keep our community unique. Mostly it's about people. These are some of the great business owners that I get to know and work with um, who obviously are as passionate about buying local um, as I am. Okay, so how does this all work? There's two sides to love local, buy local. There's the business side, and then there's the consumer side, and I'll explain. Um, so, I'm sorry, there we go. So what does a business get with membership? Um, they get some great exposure. We all know advertising is really expensive, and um, exposure is important. So. They get great exposure on the website, the free app, social media. Um, they get a window cling telling people that, um, that they take the card, the Love Local card, which I'll explain. Um, they, uh, 
I, I also offer um, a way to post events for them, manage um, offers and news and upload photos. Um, they get to use the Love Local by Local uh, logo as much as they want. I encourage them to include it in their email signature, um, use it in their social media. The businesses that have really uh, done the best with it have really incorporated it into their marketing and their advertising. So um, they get invited to LLBL's networking functions, which we all love to network. Again, you wouldn't be here if you didn't like to do that. So anyway, so that's another benefit. Membership requirements, really simple. It must be an independently, or independent and locally owned business. And you have to agree to honor the Love Local card for the period of the membership, which is 12 months. It's very easy. So what, what is independent? What is locally owned? How do we define that? Um, independent means that the owner of the business has full decision-making power um, within that business. Um, they pay for their own expenses. So locally owned means that it's privately held. It's not a franchise, so they're not sending out any money um, outside of the community. What does it cost? Annual membership is $500. Um, pretty, pretty good deal considering they can get all of that money back. And I'll explain that too. So the card, the card's a very important component of, um, of this business. So members have the opportunity to sell the Love Local card. And I'm sorry, I should have one with me to show you, but I have some, so see me afterward if you, if you want to see it. But it sells for $10. The business retains all of the profit um, from the sale of the card. I wanted this to be a win-win situation. Um, for the community, I want business owners to benefit. I want their customers also to benefit. Um, and that's really set up to, to do that. So more about the card. So the card, this is what it looks like if it's registered on um, a smartphone. So this is my card um, registered within the website, which then magically appears in my app. I love technology. Um, this is the card. I mean, it, it, there's a picture of it. So yeah. Oh, thanks. Anyway, I guess I can see it there, but here it is. So it's a regular credit size or credit card size card. Um, what does a card get me? So spending just $10 gets you all kinds of perks, savings, benefits um, at local businesses, at every member business all year long. So this 2015 card is good till the end of the year. And every time I walk into um, Harder House, for example, I get 5% off my total every single time. I get to save it with bodacious cases. Love bodacious cases. Um, so many great businesses. Uptown Boutique. There's a lot of, um, a lot of boutiques. There's a lot of hair places. There's martial arts. There's, there's a quite a variety. So just some of the many places to save, just to show you uh, the variety of businesses. It's been fun to see um, how many just different kinds of businesses we really do have in, in Springfield. And there's a lot. So lots of great places to eat and save. Logo wear, we have logo wear available and there will be an online store coming very soon. Very excited about that. We've been using the, the shirts and the bags um, for a lot of Facebook giveaways. So. Um, Please like us on Facebook. So, how do we plan to grow? We want to branch out uh, geographically, obviously. Um, we have a few member businesses in Ozark. We obviously want to expand um, further out into Nixa, Willard, um, and then, event well, we do have a business in Joplin, actually, um, one. So, but we're, we're going to get there. But, um, continue to evolve technologically. We'd like to get to the point where we're tracking redemption. It's easy to know how many cards are being sold, obviously based on inventory, um, but it's a little trickier to know how often people are coming in and, and using the card. So we'd like to get to, to that point, and it's possible, thankfully, after talking with my app guru, so um, we'll get there. Hold more events, encourage more community involvement, which I'm very passionate about. 
So, love to connect with you all. We're on social media, obviously, as you know, we all are, right? Um, so today, I put it out there to you. I'm challenging you to take the buy local pledge. So, I, I can't think of any reason not to buy local. And if you have the choice, just try to make a conscious effort to do so. Um, thank you. <laughs> That's really it. Okay, we'll open it up for a question and answer. You can raise your hand if you have a question. I'm going to make a comment. I know, I've known Anessa for a while, and she's awesome. I knew her before she started this, and I know as a business owner how much this meant would mean to me. I actually sold my business just before she got started. Yeah. But for us, that would have been a really great thing because local business, I mean, they need your support. So thanks. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Um, I was just wondering about like the reasons behind why you chose to use the newsletter to advertise as opposed oh. to some other yeah. mediums that are available like within the Springfield community. Yeah, yeah, no, well, great question. We're not stopping there. We're not stopping there at all. Um, I, um, there you are. I want to advertise with 417. <laughs> so, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> so, that is certainly in the plans. I, we're, we're not stopping there, but that's a really good question. Um, you know, the news leader, it's funny because we all think that nobody reads the paper anymore. But I'll tell you, I, I have talked with um, business owners who have, have gotten as much um, benefit out of them as. as they do with 417, which is great. So there's lots of great outlets out there. So anyway, but good question. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was curious a little bit about yeah. um, how you guys partner with local uh, not-for-profits. And you know, specifically, there are a lot of cool events that take place throughout the course of a year that go to benefit yeah. not-for-profits. And I could see there being yeah. you know, some sort of, you, you guys sponsor that, you know, uh, showcase the event on the website. And if you're a holder of the card, you get a discounted ticket price to attend the event or something along those lines? Absolutely. I mean, we're completely open to that. Um, I don't know if you have something specific in yes. mind. You do? <laughs> well, will you contact me and, <laughs> and I'll give you my card and let's let's talk. Because we, we I mean, really, truly, um, I'm very passionate about supporting nonprofits and um, would love to get more involved with that. So, um, so let's talk. Yeah, sidebar. <laughs> yeah, Joel? Uh, you had said that your business had grown uh, tripled right the number yeah. of the number of people who have endorsed your card yeah uh, which is impressive but you. as you're growing obviously you're going to encounter businesses that have uh, drawbacks about your product what is I don't know your most right. common drawback what do businesses uh, what are they most skeptical of and how do you answer that you know the most challenging part has been um, there are some businesses that just simply um, forget to sell the card and they have so many other things on their plate and I understand we all have a lot going on and um, so I actually um, I started offering in fact I just did one of these the other day with Pickwick Underground Framing slash Zen 3 Spa but I, I started offering these little workshops um, to member businesses no cost to them but I go in and we have bagels and coffee and talk about um, some creative ways to sell the card because obviously that's, I mean, that's something that is important to me. I want them to get their money back. I want more cards to be out there, obviously, because that's growing the, the movement. Um, and so, um, so yeah, so I talked with them and we, we sort of um, you know, spun around some ideas in our head and it just became an open discussion and came up with some great, great ways to, to sell the card more. But that's really been really the most challenging part, I guess. And then I have places like um, Blue Raven and the Uptown Boutique, um, who I can barely keep stocked on cards. They're always calling me and needing more. So, and they've just kind of gotten into the habit of saying, do you have your Love Local card today? And, and if they don't know what it is, they just offer it to them. So really, that's, that's probably been the most yeah, challenging part. Anybody else? Yeah. It appears. It appears that uh, yeah, sir, sir, sir. the business would be benefited the most by the, the most people having cards. Exactly. Has yes. there, in your business yeah. model, was there any consideration given to free distribution of cards or 
a split revenue model with nonprofit organizations to market and sell them as a fundraiser for their organization? Well, and that's how, I mean, fundraising, we have, we have gotten, gotten into that. Um, but, um, you know, really as far as giving away the card, the reason why I didn't do that is because I, I want businesses to be able to, to recoup that cost. $500, I'm not minimizing that that's, you know, it's not a lot of money when it comes to advertising dollars. It's a lot of money, right? But, but you know what I'm saying. So advertising is expensive. So um, I just, I wanted them to have a tangible way um, to get that money back. And, and really, the more businesses that come on board, it grows exponentially. Because truly, there is a reason to sell the card for them. They make money. They make um, a lot of profit from it. So um, I start each business out with 10 cards. When they need more, I, I sell them for a, a dollar, and that covers the cost for me. But, but anyway, so they're getting 90% profit. So there's, that's a pretty good incentive to sell the card. Um, I don't know of any other product that they would get that much profit. But, but anyway, so... Um, so anyway, I don't know if that answered your question, but with nonprofits, that's why we got into fundraising, and that's why we do we offer the 70% 70 30 split, which is pretty huge for them, you know. So anyway, yeah. Yes, I have a question that I will ask you now. Yes. Um, <laughs> great I'm presentation ready now. as always. Um, <laughs> glad you're part of the community. Um, the thing I'm wondering is, so you've been you've been in business long enough that you've had a renewal cycle with these businesses, right? And just, just starting it, yeah. Really, so but that's yeah. awesome. Congratulations for that. Um, what has that been like? Um, you know, getting people not just convincing them the first time with your great sales pitch, but after oh, actually having a life cycle with a product. What's that been like? Getting them to you know come back on board, and what's yeah. your retention rate been? Yeah. And um, what have you heard from those people who did sign back up yeah. as the you know differentiator from you and other loyalty programs that it's got them to sign back up? Okay, well, really good question. Um, the retention rate so far is 100%. I'm so excited <laughs> about that. Um, hopefully it will stay that way. But, um, you know, it's funny. The people that, that came on board early on especially, they really um, believed in... The, the movement behind this. And so, um, you know, so far getting those people to renew really, uh, it's, been, it's been somewhat easy in a way because they care about local, they're passionate about it. I mean, I started from literally nothing, you know, and had to go in and say, do you wanna become part of something where I don't have anything to show for it yet, but this is why I, I wanna do this and, and it'll help all of us. So, so, um, so it's been really fun to get those those renewals and thank you good question so yeah uh, yeah yeah um, uh, I was just wondering about your growth plan like how do you plan to scale and also how do you plan to scale in other cities like maybe Kansas City or St. Louis or is that yeah. even part of your plans it is it is part of the plan um, again starting out you know I say branching out geographically and really kind of in you know Springfield was sort of the start you know and I really want to branch out from there and I want to hire people um, to go out and talk to business owners um, in these other communities, in the outlying communities. So it'll, again, I, I, I really like exponential growth and um, I, I plan um, to grow exponentially in that way, but I, need, I do need feet on the ground. And so that's, that's part of the plan is getting um, people out there talking. So I, you know, I can't do it all. I can't be everywhere at once. So <laughs> unfortunately, right? We, if you, if anybody figures out a way to clone yourself, I, that would really be a great talk. So, but anyway, thank you. Good question. So. Do you have? I'm back in the back in the corner. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Standing yeah. already. <laughs> oh, there you are. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Mysterious voice. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about individuals that have, <clears throat> excuse me, a local business that offers um, services nationally? Kind of, how do you? Is there a plan that's separate in place for that? I've never gotten that question. Never ever been approached by that. Um, I'm trying to think of what kind of business. Like, so, on, for like example, maybe accounting sort of, or. Well, yeah. So I'm firms. I'm thinking in terms of myself, really. Yeah. But um, oh, okay, <laughs> if okay. I'm offering yeah. like a consultation type of business that's available yeah. to individuals nationally, or like a box subscription kind of program that's available oh. for shipping and and, and nationally. Right. 
um, would that be an independent, would that meet your criteria still for buy local? Sure, as long as it's not um, tied to a franchise, absolutely. Yeah, if it's, if, yeah, it would meet the criteria of being local if it's you that owns the business and, um, and you're not tied to a franchise. By the way, I have nothing against franchises. Um, I just want you to know that, that I'm not like anti-franchise completely. I mean, I know there's a lot of more local franchises that give a lot to the community, um, but I had to find a, a place to draw the line, kind of a clear, um, a clear place, and that was really the easy way to do that. So anyway, yeah. yeah so I'd like you to elaborate a little bit on yeah. what your um, Love Local events will be for the vendors? Yeah, well, I would love to do um, sort of a sampling event where, you know, I, I know there's, um, and forgive me if I'm calling this by the wrong name, but Taste of Taste of Springfield, right? Uh, is that right? Yes. Yeah, where, yeah, so Taste of Springfield. Um, but I would love to offer an outlet for, for my businesses to be able to showcase their wares or their, their goods or their food. Um, so that's really what I'm focusing on now, so. I'm going to spotlight them a little bit more. So, well, so we've just got yeah. a minute left here before yeah. we wrap up. How can we as a community help you? Gosh, you guys, um, first of all, buy local. It's, it's, it's easy and it's more fun and you get better service and better goods. Um, you can really help me by letting me know of um, businesses that, that you can think of that might be interested, that might be passionate about this. Um, maybe you yourself are a business that's, that's interested um, in a a, really a low cost way to, to spread the word about your business while supporting a great cause. Um, and uh, gosh, what else? Like me on Facebook and connect with me on Twitter. <laughs> so that's really it, you guys. Thank you so much. You've been very interactive. I love it. Thank you. I really appreciate Anessa because, like I say, she does a great job for local businesses. So I've got the announcements today. So we've got the Building Your ul Ultimate Business Plan, April 15th and 16th. It's only $1,000. Oh, I'm kidding. I mean $139. We've got Talking Business with Eric Spellman, April 1st for $49. Talk to Rayanna over there. <laughs> there she is. Um, the E-Factory has a speaker series, which is free. Getting noticed by Paul Freeman. It's talking about generic marketing, et cetera, other things that don't work for your business. Uh, April 14th, so try and go to that. Uh, four, what is the time? 4 p.m. Paul Barry, what did I say? Paul Freeman? Paul Barry. Oh, it's, it is. <laughs> It's Sterling's fault. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he asked me if I wanted to write the announcement. I said, no, I do not. I'm just going to read them incorrectly. Sorry, April Fools. <laughs> Paul, Paul Berry. Uh, Reinvestors, is Sean here today? Sean or Brad? There's Brad. They're having their Real Estate Investor Expo at the Savoy. This is going to be a, a really good deal for people who are thinking of investment, real estate people. Etc. Uh, Spin 66 Innovation Summit with Cody, May 7th and 8th at the E Factory. And Bodacious Cases is launching their crowdfunding campaign. Stay tuned. There she is. Talk to her about when it's going to happen. All right. Damien's up next. Yes. He has, an, I think, an awesome business. I haven't seen it yet. So we'll find out. Yes, you will. Whoa. <laughs> Thanks, you Damien. <laughs> Did, did that make anyone else like really hungry? Like, I really want to go just eat a lot of food now. That, that was good. I love the business. Uh, hi, I'm Damien. Uh, I'm the founder of Press, and it's a personal assistant that helps you manage both your time and your goals. Uh, but before I talk about that, I kind of want to talk about the story behind it. So uh, a lot of you know of me, uh, you know, and, you know, I thought I'd, you know, know that I've kind of lived kind of a crazy life, uh, you know, that I was the youngest person to start a super PAC. Uh, you know, I was the fashion blogger for the Battlefield Mall. It doesn't look like it anymore, but <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I went to a great school in New York, and then uh, also I competed comp 
uh, I competed on a professional level in flowboarding. But most of you know me from my time in California. You probably heard a lot about that. And uh, for those of you that haven't, uh, I went out to California for an entrepreneurship program. And at the end, uh, I was invited by a famous investor named Tim Draper to stay and build a company there. And uh, sorry, it's kind of hard to talk about. But uh, yeah, it, it was an incredible opportunity because I was out in Silicon Valley and uh, I met a really incredible person who was actually on the team, initial team of Google Maps. And I started the company with him and we had all these great connections and we had a great idea and we had everything going for us, but it didn't work out. And uh, you know, I kind of stepped up to the plate and I swung and I missed. And there was a lot of reasons behind that. And part of that was you know, poor decision making but also another part of that was uh, depression and kind of, uh, it made it really hard to, you know, be the person I wanted to be and follow through. And at that point I came back and I realized that, you know, uh, I, I want to be able to fix this for myself, but also a lot of people are struggling with the exact same problems of being the person they want to be. And that's when I dropped everything and decided to go for press. And, oh, there's California. That's press. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and so the idea behind Press is that I want to help everyone be the person they want to be. And that's not just managing your calendar and to-do list, but that's also managing your goal. For those of you that want to run more and start working out more, uh, I found like one of the biggest problems is that your current life kind of gets in the way of you know, running more and eating healthier. So the first step that we looked at is how do we fix time management? So let me kind of draw out a scenario for you. I think we've all been through this. You're walking down the street, you realize, oh wow, I shouldn't mow the lawn tomorrow. So what do you do? You have to pull out your phone, unlock your phone, find whatever to-do list application you use, add that in, add all the details, then put your phone back. And it's kind of exhausting and you have to do that day after day and multiple times a day and it's just so exhausting. I go through to-do list applications all the time. So uh, first we thought, you know, we gotta side. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's how the presentation's going. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought if we really want people to use our app, we have to make sure that we figure out how to do, uh, make time management delightful. And first we started doing that, that you can manage all of your existing calendars and to-do lists all in one place. So you have Google Calendar, iCalendar, uh, Outlook, whatever, whatever to-do list you have, we manage it all in one place in kind of this beautiful, simple app. But also, you know, I told you about that scenario of having to unlock your phone, take the app out. Uh, we make it possible to where you can actually add tasks to the app via Siri, uh, which is really cool. And then also, secondly, we use uh, proprietary natural language processing, which basically means that when you add tasks, uh, you just type it in and we already we already filled the information for you. So like, let's say you wanna to go to the E-Factory, you say one million cups, nine, 9 a.m. at the E-Factory. We load all that information in and with the reminders and the location so you don't have to go fumbling through. So we're trying to make it as simple as possible. But then the second part of the equation is building habits. And I feel like this is kind of the story for a lot of people. Like this is how, you know, January you're lifting it up and then this is February for a lot of people. Uh, this is kind of a bear slide, oops. Uh, and there's a few reasons for that. Like I did a lot of research. Uh, one of our advisors is actually, uh, he's on the scientific advisory board for Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz. He's a best-selling author. We like really sat down because I don't want to be the, oh, you can build habits. Like I really want you to help build habits and achieve these goals. We figured out a big problem is remembering. And second is remembering at the right times. Like for instance, most people that I found, they remember during meetings, not when they're watching Netflix to go run more. And also another problem is pacing. Uh, you know, as I said, January, a lot of people are at the gym, but February, March, less and less people come in. And a big problem with that is pacing. They try to boil the ocean, they go all in, when they're supposed to take little steps at a time if they really want to create the habit. And then the fourth problem that we're trying to solve is the knowledge gap. So, you know, most people don't just automatically know about working out. You know, there's a lot of research. You gotta know what workouts to do, what type of supplements you should take, what type, type of diet you should do. And that's another big thing that helps get people overwhelmed of achieving their goals. So we kind of took that into mind and 
we uh, do a few key things very well. We take a, we started with a few like sponsored habit tracks and it's like this really cool thing. Like for instance, we have working out, eating healthy, even learning to program. Uh, and we broke it down into small steps and uh, with a lot of information so you can save your time and you don't have to do that. And then secondly, we have this awesome AI that basically reminds you when, where, and how you actually will complete the task. So we won't be reminding you during meetings or if you guys have ever had a job on like it shakes when you're not being active and it always do that while it's studying or working. Uh, we don't remind you during that. We remind you when you're on Netflix or browsing Twitter when you shouldn't be. So yeah, uh, and a big part of that is it also integrates with your calendar so we can add those suggestions based on your calendar. And uh, also it helps you track your progress and you know, it's kind of this beautiful way to do it. So we're an app but also we're a business. And uh, the first way that we're a business is a sponsored habit track. And it's really simple. Uh, let's say Nike, uh, we already have a current habit track sponsor. Their, their name is Team Treehouse and they teach people how to uh, build websites. And they are sponsoring our learn, to front, learn front end web development habit track. And basically for them, that gives them the opportunity to reach high quality users that are actually gonna use their product but also how educate users on how to use that product and kind of help with the steps. So uh, yeah, that's our current business model. Um, and this is kind of why they like it. Uh, I included the picture of Zeus was advertising to me on Twitter and that's, you know, I don't need Zeus. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> so the idea is like, it's really hard to reach these like high quality people uh, users and we're literally tapping into exactly who wants your product uh, and we help them get unique da data on their users and how they're actually using the app and when they're using the app and or, or where they're using the product and stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot more I would like to talk about but obviously I can't talk about so that's it. <laughs> Okay, guys, raise your hands if you have a question. Damien, I want to learn something more about one of the features uh, is habit tracks. Can yeah. you elaborate a little bit further on who um, good potential people to sponsor your habit tracks would be? Maybe it's Nike yeah. for uh, yeah. Fit, and then what are the other app possibilities? Yeah, so just people that aren't really like competing, like I, uh, like Fitbit, Jawbone, like they probably wouldn't be a good person to sponsor a habit track because they have their own app and stuff like that. They don't want people getting reminders via that. But yeah, people like Nike, we're doing a 5K habit track, uh, like maybe the color runs, stuff like that. We're just now starting to reach out to people. Uh, at first, I was just gonna do one business to kind of validate the business model, but I was like, I only contacted one person. They said, yes, I might as well just go for everyone. So yeah, so we have a nine other habits, like drink more water. Uh, learn a new language, so. So my question is around um, your willingness to mentor others. I think at your age level, the experiences that you've already been a part of are probably unmatched. And, um, you know, personally, I have a brother who is a year into developing an app, you know, $45,000 later and a ton of failures later. And um, I can just, I can't imagine when now we're on the phone with you might do, you know, for somebody who is kind of at your same stage maybe in, or development or someone who's got your same drive but doesn't have your experiences that you can say, hey, don't do this, don't do that, and make sure you do this. I uh, got in trouble for that last time. <laughs> I presented uh, One Million Cups before and I was kind of told how to do it wrongly and I told everybody like, this is how you start a tech company and then like, you know, you guys are a lot older than me and I'm, I was 19, so it was kind of awkward. But yeah, I would love to. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's, now that you've got, now that you can present it humbly, give us a few of the, uh, of, of, give us a few of Damien's credentials. Oh what, what, what is it that uh, qualifies you to build a really good app? I, I actually don't like that question. Uh, <laughs> if there, anyone in here that's like, I, I would do this, but I don't think I'm qualified, that's, such a dumb question. Anybody's qualified to do anything. And uh, yeah, it, I think what qualifies you is just wanting it bad enough. Like, you know, finding what you actually like and then going for that and everything else will kind of fit into place. Uh, so when I, part of, you know, 
it was a little harder for me, but also when I was starting that healthcare company, like I figured out I wasn't passionate about healthcare. People were mean to me in healthcare. They're like, they didn't want to listen to me talk about a product. They're like, you'll never get in. But also I, when I found what I love, like I started like really liking it. When I started helping people like use these certain, you know, what really makes press press, start using that for their life. They actually started changing their life and started doing things. And that that's what really got to me. That was like that magical moment of knowing. So, you know, you don't really need credentials to start a company. Like you just go do it and you learn by doing like and tell you whatever you're doing right now, like maybe researching, no, just do it. So yeah, that's the credentials. Okay. <laughs> so who is your target audience? Because I know that a lot of people that are younger than me, I'm not going to say I'm old, but I'm going to tell you I don't have my phone oh, out fine. all the time. So for apps for me are going to be, like, I don't know how it would remind me. It'd have to be somewhere near me. So but who's who's your, <laughs> like, yeah, I can see. Oh, I'm not supposed yeah. to watch. But, I mean, who's your target mod audience? Uh, 22 to 28 year olds, we're kind of targeting people that are just transitioning out of college or, you know, beginning their adult life. So they're like creating these habits of how they're managing their time and like what type of lifestyles they're wanting to live. And that's who we're focusing on now. Like, and, but we've had like 70 year olds like, oh, like sign up for the beta. We have it. We had a beta sign up like we and I was kind of shocked by just the wide array. But that's our target market. Great job, fellow Originate member. Proud to see you up there. Um, <clears throat> just real quickly, and, and we've talked about this before, and I've, I've seen a little bit more of what you got going on. It's really exciting. Um, but this is, and you touched on it a little bit, this is kind of a crowded space. Um, there's a lot of other options out there. And so what do you think is your value prop? What do you think helps take you from just another Reminders app to really something that can initiate life change for people? Uh, honestly, it's our AI, like rem not reminding you at random times or some of you that have apps that just remind you 9 a.m. every day, like do this, do this. Eventually you just become immune to it if you're not responding to it. Uh, and for us, it's our AI that knows when to remind people, where to remind people, and how to, like, like the exact language of how to remind people. And I think that's really special. And that's actually part of our goal is if we want to get acquired, I think that's the proprietary technology that could really set us apart. This may be irrelevant because I'm the ripe age of 39. <laughs> but how do you remind me during Netflix that I'm supposed to go uh, out and jog? So I, I don't want to talk too much about it, but we could tell like if you're at your house or not. Uh, and we could, <laughs> I, I'm not going to tell you how, but. <laughs> but also your calendar and just general user people behavior of like what time of the day. Uh, it's not going to be exact. like. You might be having fam dinner with family, but it's going to be pretty close. And that's how we actually learn. Like, our AI learns, like, oh, wow, he didn't respond. Maybe this is dinner time for him. And so it reminds you maybe a little bit later or a little bit earlier. And so it analyzes all those different things and the user behavior to kind of try to figure it out. So, so it's kind of like the beacon feature where No, uh, it's more, it's, it's, yeah, I guess, yeah, you would have to have a beacon placed in your house, but, uh, yeah, we can use location-based, like, there's, yeah, just GPS. Damien, you've officially freaked everybody out. Yeah, so let's, let's, talk, let's, uh, let's talk about privacy. You, uh, the, your, the user's information is completely predicted. Opt of It's opt-in, so yeah. you can choose to allow yeah, the you, application uh, to know using just the same features that yeah. Google Maps uses, that this is your home because this is this where is a you good tend to because, sleep every night. Yeah, this is a good gauge. Like obviously location information would help, but I, I like to get a good gauge of people who are like, I don't want you to know where I live. Even, I'm like, I'm trying to help you, okay? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but it's still, I like to have a general idea. Like we obviously have to have your location information to like, if you say you wanna go to a certain place, we add the address in, but you know, it's something we're playing with, so. I'd like to dig down. So I don't really mind if you know that I'm watching Netflix, but it bothers me if you know what I'm watching yeah. on Netflix. <laughs> I don't think I want to know that either, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
I don't fit your target demographic either, and a lot of what you're saying it feels very beyond my scope of understanding. However, I'm really kind of more curious about how you came up with your name and kind of the humanitarian aspect of your business. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I, you know, when you get into product development, you get really focused on the specs, like, you know, how does this certain screen, how should it look? And you kind of, sometimes you get lost about the general vision and general vision behind press is like a personal assistant, like the next feature, like it's incredible. It's gonna be just like a real personal assistant, except for you don't have to hire someone. So that's kind of the idea behind it. But press actually came for a press from, press for time, you know, like you're pressed for time. So yeah, uh, that last part I, that kind of got me, there's, there's not really a humanitarian aspect to it. I, that's why I'm just confused by that. Could you elaborate? Yeah. I don't understand it either. <laughs> it just works. I was just curious, how much is this app for a user? And I just want to say, I think this is a great idea because some people just aren't taught habits, certain habits. Like, you know, people grow up in different homes. I mean, like something like this, you know, it can really be that person nudging you kind of like, you know, pushing you towards your goals and stuff. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, it's actually completely free and it always will be. Um, so yeah, because we make money, like for instance, everybody who decides that they want to learn to program, we get a certain fee from that. And then also whoever signs up for that site, we get a certain percentage of it. So we always want it to be completely free. Like even if we start I can't talk about it, never mind. Like health features, like once we start doing that, like you track your fitness in the app, we still want it to be free, like once we start expanding what our product is. Yeah, that, that answered my question for the most part, which was what is your, what are your revenue streams and do you, out, I guess outside of that, do you have any um, projections or ideas for alternative revenue streams or is that the, yeah, that's the business we, model? Yeah, we have, we, there's actually a second business model that's coming with V2. So we're getting V1 out, it's MVP, minimal viable product. Just get it out there, have people use it, you know, see things like, oh crap, people don't want me to know where they live, even if I'm trying to help them. <laughs> like, you know, we're trying to get that out there. And then the more features that, you know, if you kind of think of what a personal assistant, like someone who would actually, like if you could find the perfect person to do that, like maybe they would tell you exact specifics. Like there's stuff like that. Like we really want it to be a real personal assistant, but we, you know, we can't talk too much about the second version. But yeah, there's actually a second uh, business model that's a lot more fruitful, but that's coming in V2, so. So I'm super excited about this because Damien actually, uh, his desk is across from me in Originate, and so he hears my alarm go off all the time. <laughs> And then I use my calendar for reminders, but I'm, I'm super excited about this. When, when can we get it? Okay, uh, we just hired uh, a new developer, so two months, two months. So Damien, elaborate on that. Where were you up to this point that you hired that, uh, that developer? What so, was the seed capital oh, to get yeah. you started? I didn't talk about that at all. Uh, so when I came back, I had the idea for press, but I didn't have any resources, anything. So I applied to accelerators. And what accelerators are, they take a certain piece of your company and they give you money and resources, stuff like that. And I just applied to them with the idea. I was lucky enough to get into one that gave me uh, 25,000 just to go up and build it. And I went to Northern Michigan. It was kind of a weird place. It's a small town in Northern Michigan. But yeah, and I used that for development purposes. And uh, yeah, and we switched developers and that's actually part of it. Like I kind of got away from what's behind press and I got stuck in the mud and then he kind of helped got me back out and we switched development firms and yeah developer so. so you're right now you're kind of on the wire though yeah. you've got a certain amount of capital left that's going to be spent to finish up product development with your developer and then you need to raise more money right yeah yeah uh, yeah I like to say I'm not worried about raising money but I am so <laughs> Like anytime anybody's that, I was like, oh, I have investor connections, but I'm still worried about it because you know they still say no. But 
Yeah, I, I just had that little bit, and uh, the plan is, uh, like, I have enough left and just go back out to California and raise with the investors that I had been committed to the other company, and hopefully they're not mad that I'm not doing that anymore, so. Dan, I just want to keep this ball rolling here. Yeah, so let's rolling. talk, let's talk no. about when you're raising capital. Um, okay. An application like yours is not like any traditional brick and mortar or service business. And the way that your business is going to be valued is completely different and maybe a little bit yeah. not scientific. So, <laughs> yeah. ha, so you having gone through Google's accelerator, you've gone yeah. through Draper University, yeah. and you've had a little bit of experience with building a product and slapping a value on it to raise money later. What is your strategy with press? So you're going to come out, you're going to hope for a certain dollar amount, and then how are you going to get there? You want me to tell you how much we're raising? No, I'm kidding. Uh, it's actually really random, basically. Like tech companies, like if they have a product out and some sort of validation at this point, and they have a team, like usually you're looking at about three to three and a half million valuation. Like that's just how it is. And like here, it's like way harder. Like you actually have to do stuff here. In California, like you're like, oh, I have an idea and a team. They're like, money, money, money. So like if you heard there's a bubble, I don't think it's a bubble, but they give money for everything. So I almost got money for my last thing and I shouldn't have. So yeah, uh, but yeah, the, the, there's no real metrics. So like you, you guys probably know like, oh, 10x revenue, uh, whatever profit. Uh, there, it's There's really not that metric until like maybe the third round of funding, so yeah. So People just usually raise what they're needing for like a year and a half worth of runway, and then they turn that into about 25% of the company, and that's usually how the valuation's done. Uh, there's more technicalities to it, but that's just generally what happens. Okay. Hello. Um, how many business incubators did you apply to before you got accepted? That's one question. And then Stacy over here wants to know if it's just for the iPhone only. And then I also wanted just to like say, <laughs> the money, money, money thing is cool. But if you get the money over there, then you can bring it here and yeah. your employees are cheaper. Yeah, I, yeah exactly. Um, I've struggled to find like uh, people that can fit the role here. But yeah, like I understand it's so expensive there. Like that a part of the reason I came back was uh, a one bedroom, like a really bad one bedroom was 1500 a month. So it, it was pretty rough, and uh, yeah, so that's the idea. It's like, I'll probably come back here unless if we raise like substantial, because I love California, but you know, there's stuff to be done here, you know? So uh, it is iPhone only. And then how many applied to? I, d I decided not to apply to the bigger ones, like Y Combinator or 500 Startups. I really only applied to like four, but at the same time, like I was kind of lost, like, I didn't want to apply with press and then have that not go anywhere. So I also applied to a couple healthcare accelerators with the other one and I thought maybe I'll just toughen it out and get more experience. So yeah, I think I've applied to, I applied to like five the last time. How did you decide which ones to apply for? And did they all offer money or were some just like yes. their time? They all offer money. I, I wouldn't even waste my time with the ones that you have to like pay and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they all offer money. Uh, how did I pick? It's gonna sound really dumb because at the time I, I wasn't sure if press was like a real thing or not. So I was like, would I like to visit there? How much money are they giving? No, I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it just where I where I ended up going. They actually had a product team that helped you build the app and like do the design. There's some incredible people on that, and that was a big factor for me as well. So. Any advice to those who are considering joining an accelerator or incubator through the application process or having gone through it, being able to extract the value that you're looking for? Um, yeah, I, I say just try it. Like, even if you don't know if it's right for you or not, just apply, talk to the people. You might find that it is right for you. Um, yeah, it's, it's not like raising money at all. You don't need like introductions or anything like that. So I'd say just apply, make sure you know it. Uh, Make sure you know your product. Be excited about it. You know. Damon, we've got just a couple of minutes left here, so we'll wrap up with the same question we do for every presentation. Uh, <laughs> how can we, as a community, help you? All right. So uh, I probably have like the weirdest answer of all time, but uh, I need a lot of paper, uh, Manila folder type paper, like cardstock. Uh, the bigger, the better. I'm breaking the world record for the largest Manila folder for our press release, and we're going to send that to TechCrunch. And so I need a lot of paper, 
and I've called a lot of paper suppliers, and they all look at me like I'm, or talk to me like I'm crazy, and, uh, and the people that are like, yeah, I can do that, they want me to buy 10 tons worth, so it's just one folder, so if anybody has a okay, lot of paper. Okay, ele elaborate a little bit. The novelty, of yeah. you want the world's largest manila world's folder. World's largest manila folder. I wanted to break the world record for the largest press release on a piece of paper. They said, you can't do that. Uh, and then I said, okay, what can I do? And they told me the manila folder. And so I want to break the world record for our launch. So, you know, we're doing a lot of cool, crazy things to, you know, like, we, you only, YOLO, you only launch once, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you Okay, everybody, that wraps it up for today. Just a couple of things. Some of you might have noticed that we changed the layout of the room so we could fit a few more chairs. And while some of you might have been thinking, uh, well, if it wasn't broke, why fix it? Because we're entrepreneurs, and if it's not broke, break it. And then we make it better. So I hope that you have uh, gotten a little bit more visibility. We squeezed a few more people in the room. Uh, and then one other thing, we are growing as an organization. Uh, I can't believe that we've made it this far and it's finally time for some people, for some fresh new blood. So, Philip, would you come up here real quick? This is Philip Baird. He's a very, very sharp entrepreneur. You've seen him present here at A Million Cups with the Spirit Factory. Uh, he's also a Springfield native, a Glendale grad. Any Glendale grads out there? Yeah! <laughs> Anyways, we're very proud to not just welcome uh, him to the team, but also have him as a part of the community. So a big round of applause and a warm welcome to Philip. So that wraps it up. We will be here same time next week, and we'll see you all then.